Good evening. You know, it's a, it's a pleasure for me to be with you here this evening, and I first want to acknowledge the, the Im immense amount of interest by you participating in this, bringing the candidates out, and I think that's really critically important. You see, I've been in opposition, as I say, for many years. And one of the reasons why I made the decision to, to jump to federal politics <coughs> is because there are limitations as what you can do in opposition. Number one issue in Winnipeg North today is crime and safety. That is number one. Uh, we hear a lot about getting tough on crime. And I would like to kind of change the focus and start saying that we need to get tough on the causes of crime. Then we're going to be able to be in a position to make our communities safer for each and every one of us. Because at the end of the day, if we don't engage people that live in the communities, into the process, we are doomed to failure. We could have another 1,500 police officers roaming our streets. We're doomed to failure unless we get the people on side. So that means we need to get reinvigorated, whether it's the block, block parents, whether it's the neighborhood watches, whether it's the youth justice committees. Decisions are critical. In the last 10 years, Look at what, where Winnipeg North is today compared to where it was 10 years ago. Well, could it have made a difference if we were, in fact, had a member that was in government? My understanding is the annual cost for gun registry is about $5 million. I look at gun registry as one of the many tools that the police have at their access, and it's been proven to, to be effective. Uh, the, the gun registry is accessed over 11,000 times a day. The uh, gun registry has in fact had a, a positive impact and a vast majority, 90% plus of the different police associations across our country are on side with the gun registry. I can tell you the way in which it was brought in and uh, administered it sucks. <laughs> Um, I thought that they could have done it in a whole lot better of fashion. They almost blew it because of the manner in which it was brought in. But at the end of the day, if we listen to what the professionals are telling us, if we look at the numbers that are being reported on in terms of its usage, the gun registry is in fact working. You can talk about... Uh cocaine and others, and the, the amount of damage and destruction that, that the drugs have had, in particular in Winnipeg North End, is immense. Uh, all you need to do is to take a walk down some of our streets, you'll see literally, literally kids biking around pushing drugs. Uh, we have to look in terms of where those drugs are coming from, and, and we don't have the type of scanning equipment necessary uh, at our Canadian borders, so that it's not being detected. Uh, nowhere near to the same degree it should be detected. And I think that what we have to, to do is, is look at the type of equipment that other countries are using in order to try to combat that problem. It's not, we're not isolated. Uh, this is an issue that many other jurisdictions are, are having to deal with. The key is we've got to have the technology and the resources uh, and be able to get uh, tougher on some of these people that are actually bringing in the drugs. Thank you. Not only is it the socially responsible thing for a government to do is to look at how we can empower and get disabled people employed, it also economically makes sense for us to do that. Um, and what government needs to do, and governments, and I believe liberal governments are committed to doing, is to provide incentives for employers that, will, that are prepared to, to hire. Because if you don't provide those additional incentives, quite often an employer looks at it from the bottom line perspective. They look at it from the, well, am I going to be able to make more money if I hire someone that's not disabled? If you can provide incentives for the employer to directly hire someone with a disability, you have a far greater chance at getting uh, closer to full employment of the disabled. And the more we get closer to full employment of the disabled, the more we're going to save in the long run, and as a society, we're better with better social programs. Thank you. You talk in terms about getting youth involved in the campaign. It is the Twitters. It is the Facebooks. It's knocking on doors. It's challenging young people to come up and participate in our campaigns. Encourage our youth to get involved at age 14. If you want young people involved in voting in a campaign, you 
you've got to provide them the platform, the vehicle to get involved. And this is something in which we take very seriously, and I believe proof is in the pudding. We need to do what we can, and I plan to do what I can, to get youth excited about the future. We want them to stay in our province. We want them to feel good about our city and Winnipeg North. The most difficult thing about the campaign is likely the challenge to be able to communicate with 70,000 plus people. Um, you know, for months we've been knocking on doors. And I'm sure many other candidates, thousands of doors. What we really want to be able to do is to make as many connections as we can. Winnipeg North is all about immigration. And there are issues that are within those communities that do need to get addressed. Uh, issues dealing with visiting visas, as an example. Um, we get over 300 cases of immigration every month through my office. And a good number of them is out of frustration because someone wants to be able to get their uh, parents down for a, for a funeral or someone wants to be able to get someone down for a wedding celebration. And we recognize that there are some serious issues such as that that need to be resolved because we have too many visas being turned down through good immigration policies that we're going to be able to continue to build a strong Winnipeg North going forward. Thank you. Like you, I love my city. I care about what's happening in our communities. I believe that I can make a difference. I believe with your help I can make a difference. It's about providing hope. It's about talking about where we want to take our communities. We can, in fact, make a difference. I'm suggesting to you that I have the experience of being inside the legislature for 18 years. I understand the issues that Winnipeg North have and our province has. I want to be able to take that experience to Ottawa. I want Ottawa to listen to what is concerning the Winnipeg North and the people that live in our communities. That's why it is that I decided to resign my seat as an MLA. Because I believe I can serve better by going to Ottawa and participating potentially in the government, at the very least in the official opposition. That we can make a difference if we work together. I am concerned about the future of Winnipeg North. I want to deal with those issues that we are facing. I want to assist in enabling for us to come together as a community in order to make a difference. It saddens me when I walk down Selkirk Avenue and you see the boarded up windows, bars, and you name it, it's there. The drugs that are being dealt. When you take a look at the Maples and the Tyndalls and the Garden Groves and the Minarskis and the Shaughnessy and you see the need for good housing programs. The revitalization of Winnipeg's North End. This is the reason why I believe that it's essential that people get out and they vote on November the 29th. Because voting, you can make a difference, and I need your support, I ask for your support. My commitment to you is what I've said to my constituents. I will be available between elections. Every week I go to the McDonald's, so I'm meeting with the average person. Thank you very much, have a wonderful evening.